Hey guys, this video is a brief explanation of the thermochemistry lab calculations for Chem 101. So start with part A where you determine the calorimeter constant for your calorimeter. Um, so I put some data um, that I made up for myself up here. Make sure you guys use your own data which is in the student lab data file on Canvas. Um, or if you're doing this in the lab then you got your own data. So um, MC stands for mass of the cold water, or the cold thing. MH stands for the mass of the hot. TIC stands for the initial temperature of the cold. TI hot stands for the initial temperature of the hot. TIH rather. And TF stands for the final temperature. We're going to need the delta T, so I calculated the delta T of the hot final here, minus the initial of the hot. Notice there's a negative sign that's really important. Signs are where you guys can, um, where everybody, me included, gets thrown off on this stuff. So you got to be really careful about that stuff. So negative 43.9 degrees Celsius for delta T of the H, the hot. Delta T of the cold is positive 26.8 degrees Celsius. All right, so with that, now we can look at the equation. So as you guys well know, the fundamental equation for all thermal, for a well, for many thermochemical experiments is negative Q hot is equal to Q cold. That is, the thermal energy that flows out of the hot object is equal to the th amount of thermal energy that flows into the cold. Now, in terms of what we have here, we write Q of the hot as negative ms delta T, mass of the hot, specific heat of the hot, delta T of the hot. And because the thermal energy is going into two places, it's going into the water inside of the calorimeter, as well as the calorimeter itself, which is the, the plastic, the metal, the styrofoam, all that good stuff. Um, we bunch that into the calorimeter constant, which is what we want to find here. So the calorimeter constant, which is just a heat capacity rather than a specific heat capacity. Delta T of the cold. Notice the delta T's are the same here because the water is inside of the calorimeter. They're, they're going to start at the same temperature and they'll end up at the same temperature. So that's, that's the same here. So do a little bit of algebra. Rearrange this equation for what we want to find this time, the calorimeter constant. It looks like this. So plugging my numbers in that I had, okay? Remember, use your own numbers, guys. Um, except, of course, the specific heat capacity of water. We'll use 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Everybody uses that one for the water. Um, again, the negative sign's important here. Um, divide by my delta T of the cold. So that looks like this, okay? Um, I get three sig figs in each top number, but when I add them, because this is times 10 to the third, which is like point, point seven seven. 3, 9 times 10 to the 4th, we only get to keep 2 past the decimal times 10 to the 4th, which is looks like this when you write it times 10 to the 3rd, 2 sig figs. Um, notice the negative signs cancel here, um, and we get a positive number. That's that's a, a real important thing to, to make note of. Every heat capacity and every specific heat capacity has to be a positive number. If you end up getting a negative number, something's wrong. Go back and check your work. So anyway, we put our numbers in here, and we get for our heat capacity of our calorimeter, our calorimeter constant to two sig figs, 260 joules per degree Celsius. Now guys, we're going to use this for the remaining parts of the experiment. We're going to use the calor this calorimeter constant that we calculate here for the remaining calculations. So let's go to the next one, part B, the unknown metal, metal shot. So again, this is my data, use your own. So M sub M stands for the mass of the metal, M sub W stands for the mass of the water, TIW stands for the initial temperature of the water, TIM stands for the initial temperature of the metal, and TF is the final temperature. Once more, we will need our delta T's, so I've calculated them. Notice that because the metal is the hot object, this time its delta T is negative. The delta T of the water is positive because it gained thermal energy from the metal. So, same fundamental equation, minus Q hot equals Q cold. Um, Q hot ms delta t for the um, metal because the metal is the hot and q cold the water and the calorimeter were the cold objects so ms delta t of the water plus the calorimeter constant which we just found times delta t again it's the same delta t as the water because they're in contact rearranging this solving for the specific heat of the metal looks like this notice the negative sign plugging my numbers in and again this number right here this is the um, calorimeter constant we calculated in the previous part of the experiment. Notice I'm using the unrounded number, although I'm using subscripts to keep track of sig figs. You guys should do that too. Um, 
also the negative here and the negative delta T of the metal cancels so we get a positive specific heat that's a good thing remember it has to be positive so plug in those numbers in um, you get two significant figures um, the two significant figures um, came from the t delta T up here of the water 4.3 that's two sig figs so when we multiply these guys out we get two two sig figs they're both times 10 to the third so when we add them up get one pass the decimal times 10 to the third um, bottom gives us this and we end up getting 0 0.92 joules per gram degree Celsius um, for the specific heat of the metal now we're not quite done yet we still have to identify them find the molar mass of the metal and identify it so we use the law of Dulong embedded which I give you in the lab it's 24.9435 divided by the specific heat of the metal um, is equal to the molar mass so plugging our specific heat that we just got in we get 27 grams per mole which is close to aluminum the closest one is 26.982 that's really close so the identity of my metal will be aluminum the molar mass will be 27 grams per mole now a couple of things um, just because I got that many sig figs doesn't necessarily mean you will you have to put your numbers in follow the sig, sig figs through every step of the calculations to figure out how many sig figs you're allowed with your numbers some are, people are going to be different than others um, also remember your metal has to be one of the ones that's given as a possibility in the lab um, so make sure you choose the one that's closest to your calculated molar mass anyway that's part B going on to part C now guys there are three parts to part C C1 C2 and C3 um, in part C1 what we're doing is finding the heat of solution of citric acid monohydrate in part C2 we're finding the heat of solution of sodium bicarbonate and in part C3 we're finding the heat of reaction between citric acid and bicarbonate so starting out with C1 um, again my data use your own mass of the acid. The acid is citric acid. W is water. Initial temperature of the water. Final temperature. Notice guys the final temperature is less than the initial temperature. This is an endothermic reaction. Um, so my delta T of my water, which is the only delta T I need this time, is, is a negative number. And with my numbers it just ended up being negative 1.0 degrees Celsius. It's, you know, that's just a fluke. Um, it ends up, you'll see on the next page guys, we're going to need how many moles of the citric acid monohydrate um, we added to the, the container. So I took the mass divided by the molar mass of citric acid monohydrate and I have my moles of my acid. We're going to use that in just a minute. So same equation, minus Q hot equals Q cold. In this case, Q hot is the change in enthalpy of the reaction times the number of moles. This will be in joules per mole. Um, Q cold is the same. MS delta T for the water plus calorimeter constant times delta T. Um, rearranging this, basically just dividing through by negative um, number of moles, we get the equation for our heat of reaction, which is what we want. Heat of the reaction is the dissolution of the citric acid monohydrate. Plugging my numbers in here, notice the negative sign here, and these negatives end up canceling, so I get a positive heat of reaction. Um, the sig figs here, the 1.0 has two sig figs, so we end up with two sig figs here. Um, I get a positive delta H. That's because it's a, an endothermic process. Um, so I get this, and I, I converted it to kilojoules per mole as I rounded. Um, it's more, you know, it's, it's nicer that way because that ends up being, you know, um, the size of the numbers we're talking about. So when we do C2, okay, I'm not going to go through that with you guys because it's exactly the same process that we just did, except you're going to use the in, your information, your data for sodium bicarbonate. So you're going to use the molar mass of sodium bicarbonate instead of the citric acid monohydrate. You're going to give the uh, use your numbers, your, your mass of your sodium car bicarbonate, um, the mass of the water, temperature of water, all that good stuff, final temperature. But same thing, you'll get the heat of reaction for dissolving sodium carbonate in water. Now, for C3, what, what, what you do is you weigh out some citric acid monohydrate, some sodium bicarbonate, and they're solids. You mix them together, they don't react. And then you put them into the calorimeter in some water, and they react, and you measure the change in temperature. Um, 
and you follow the same process as you did for C1 and C2. Um, the difference being, a couple things here guys, watch for this. Um, to find the N, it's going to be the moles of whichever the limiting reactant was. So you're going to need to calculate the um, limit, the moles of the cit for this part, which is different than part C1, the moles of the citric acid monohydrate and the moles of the sodium carbonate. Um, divide the moles of the, excuse me, sodium bicarbonate. Divide the moles of sodium bicarbonate by three because its coefficient is three in the balanced equation. And whichever gives you the smallest number is the limiting reactant. That's your N in the calculation that we did for, you know, for this one, which is just like C1. Um, when you get that delta H, that's delta H for this reaction right here, taking solid citric acid um, monohydrate and solid sodium carbonate bicarbonate, mixing them together in water, letting them react. But when you do that, see what happens is it's a multi-step process. It's, it's kind of, it's not that complicated, but it, there's a few steps to it. First, the, in order for them to react, the citric acid monohydrate has to dissociate. Um, the sodium bicarbonate has to dissociate, then they can react in the water. So what we want is not necessarily, okay, this is just one step in our goal, in finding our goal, which is to find the heat of reaction for this, the target reaction. That's the one you're asked to find. To do this, okay, you, now at this point, you guys will have all the information you need to get this. Take the, um, and I'm gonna show you this in the next slide. If you reverse the reactions from parts C1, C2, add them to the reaction part C3, which is this right here, add those together, um, you'll get this equation right here. So that means that this is the way that you do that. Um, so this is the equation from C3. This is the reverse of the equation from C1, um, which is, actually, I took that down there. Let me show you this. The delta, so the delta H for this reaction heat is just the change in enthalpy that you got for your C3 calculations. But because we, we reverse this, um, the delta H for this reaction is negative of your the, the change in enthalpy you got for your C1. And this is three times the reverse of the reaction for C, C2. So that means what the delta H for this reaction is three times negative of the delta H of C2. But Okay, if you look at this, when you cancel everything out that cancels, that's the green lines here, um, what you get is the target equation right here. And so that means the change in enthalpy for this reaction, which is what we want, is the sum of these, delta HC3 plus negative delta HC1 plus three times negative delta HC2. And you guys have these numbers from your previous calculations. Plug them in, got your answer. That's all there is to it, guys.